Japan. It conjures up images of video games, anime, giant robots, towering skyscrapers, bustling crowds, a hyper-fast <laughs> cyberpunk metropolis. But just a short train ride out of Tokyo, and you'll see this. We are Adventure Archives, and this is the other side of Japan. It was early at dawn when we awoke from our bed and breakfast in the Shinjuku area of Tokyo. We made our way to the station to catch a train out of the city. It was time for another adventure, and this time we were joined by my friend and now resident of Japan, Michael, who I studied abroad with in 2006. Even this early in the morning, the city had already started buzzing. We had spent the past several days amid that buzz, exploring Japan's urban landscape. But today it was time to break away from all of that. As the sun rose and we made our way further into the countryside, tall multi-story apartments faded away to reveal Mount Fuji cast in a golden light. The train ride continued, offering us a glimpse of life further outside the city. And soon, we began seeing bright green hills in the distance as we neared our destination. It was time to review our Keikaku. We'd be hiking out of the Kamosawa bus stop and spending a night at the Nanatsuishi tenting site. The next day, we would summit Mount Kumotori, the highest mountain in the Tokyo region, before descending to the Sanjo no Yu tent site. On our last day, we would hike out towards the Omatsuri bus stop. Finally, we arrived at Okatama Station. Here, we hopped on a bus that would take us to our trailhead. As we rode, we enjoyed the passing scenery and reviewed our plans. At the bus stop, we enjoyed the quiet stillness of the town for just a few moments. And then, it was time to start hiking. The first part of the hike took us onto streets and paved pathways, but the view of the distant hills was no less beautiful. Yeah, and we wake up to this every day. Wow. From the beginning of the hike, we were met with steep, unrelenting uphills. There's one thing I've noticed about Japanese trails is that they do not care about making the slopes less steep at all. They're like, oh, you're going up? Okay, here's a straight path. <laughs> Do you see that? That is a very steep drop. We're gonna enter the forest now.
Branching off from the paved path was a dirt trail. All around us, hand-planted cedars towered high into the sky. Got a fire hydrant way up in the middle of the mountains. Nicely leveled and everything. Is this typical? Oh, this is the first time I've ever seen one, like on any of the hikes that we've done. And then you got a fire hose box right here for the local fire department. It's obviously been used. All these fluffy grass things here, like a, ooh, like this here. It's called a, what, Suzuki, I think? I forget what the English name is actually, but this is a decorative plant people use in the US, like to plant in front of their mailboxes and stuff. It's uh, non-native to the US, but obviously it's native here. And this stuff is really good tinder. It's funny to see all these like plants that you would associate with being invasive, just growing naturally. <laughs> so growing on this log is something called witch's butter. It's a jelly fungus and it's actually edible. It's this bright orange color, super pretty. <laughs> And we found another interesting thing on the trail. I'm not sure if it's poop or just really big chunks of uh, mud that has fallen off the hill. It's gotta be mud, right? There's construction equipment up there. Oh yeah, you can see the chunks of mud up there actually. Yeah, so probably rolled down this hill. All right, we're about, probably normally about a 20 minute, 20, 30 minutes up the trail. And they are constructing a little rest stop here since there isn't one along this path, he said. So. I said, I told him, I said, thank you very much. <laughs> that will definitely be helpful to everybody. We found a shrine in a plaque nearby which read, mountains and hiking are great, but even greater is returning home safe and with a big smile. What if you were so hungry that you took the shrine's rice ball? <laughs> I think that'd be bad karma. <laughs> Keeping the shrine undisturbed so as not to lose the mountain god's protection, we continued on. We had to hike across a road to get to the next section of the trail. This is just our entrance back onto the mountain path. And this is our first tenting spot of tonight. And this is the name of the mountain. Kumo Tori Yama. Cloud Taking Mountain. We found ourselves in the forest once again, and decided to stop for a food break. Oh, some onigiri. You want me to get oh, that? There's the ketchup one. Uh, that's actually not, it's a demi-glass. Demi-glass is a sort of brown sauce that's French in origin. I think um, ball of rice might be the best I can think of. <laughs> like a ball of energy. <laughs> With a bit more fuel in our system, we continued on. Crunching below our feet were formations of needle ice, or shimobashira, as they're called in Japan. The trail continued climbing higher and higher, and soon, we were bathed in sunlight. This is something that you don't often see in the US because of a fungus that wipes all of them out, but this is a chestnut. Not the American chestnut, but a whatever variety grows here. It's got this really big spiky shell and inside this nice little chestnut here. It's already been bored through by a weevil or something, but there's actually multiple nuts inside, but uh, it's really pretty. And I'm imagining this is the leaf that belongs to the tree. Hold on, um, that's okay. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> and further down, Robbie saw another intriguing thing. I'm guessing nobody lives here anymore. But it does look like somebody lived here at one point. I wouldn't go in there for all the gold in the Nine Kingdoms. <laughs> we came to a trail marker which had no information other than the direction of the bus stop and the direction of the mountain summit. And we also found another shrine. We decided to pay our respects. 
for a safe trip. It's like overload when you try to take it all in at one glance. It's like, so massive, yeah. It's like eyes, come on, absorb it all. <laughs> it just looks surreal. There's a wooden post here and it's like completely rotted away on the inside. But there's still these spikes inside from where the branches used to be. As the tree grows, it just kind of envelops the old branches and, and they probably haven't rotted away because there's resin in them. So that's probably what's preventing them from rotting like the rest of the log. Why do they even put a sign if they're not gonna put mileage or time? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, cause time is on the map. What's our current altitude? 976. <clears throat> Meters. Yeah. The signs had no distance marked on them, so Michael's altimeter was all we had to determine our progress. We passed by a Japanese hop hornbeam tree as we continued climbing. The higher we got, the more the temperature dropped. King Arthur has returned. <laughs> <laughs> He's back to Adventure Archives. It's like as you keep going up, it gets colder and colder, especially in the shade, so I got out my chain mail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that sun. Yeah, that sun is awesome. As we hiked, we heard the loud ringing of another hiker's bear bell. I was hoping it was the ice cream truck. <laughs> that is a serious bear bell. <laughs> All along the ground are these big old leaves, which are really familiar actually to something we see in the US, magnolia. I know that because during a day hike we took earlier, there was a magnolia seed pod, and those always look really gnarly and cool. But uh, yeah, look how big this is, it's like as big as my face. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. <laughs> in this section of the forest, there were some trees that had been cut down, and small cairns had been placed on each stump. I have no idea what this is, but it looks really cool. Looks like a really bright bear corn or something. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a Jack in the Pulpit seed pot or something, but I guess we'll let the narrator tell us what this is. This cobra lily belongs to the same genus as Jack in the Pulpit. Erasima. I can see my breath now. How's everybody feeling? All right. Feeling better than I was earlier. Much better. Pace myself. It's like every time you go uphill, you just hate everything and yourself. <laughs> but then as soon as you stop and rest a bit, you're like, I can just run up this hill. <laughs> then you go 10 feet and you hate yourself. <laughs> Doesn't this feel like so uniquely Japanese? There's something about here. Holy cow, like, I wonder if we're going up that whole thing. If it curves around there and we go up the side, that is going to be serious business. Yeah. Just stepped out Little did we know, way. we would have a lot more uphill to hike. But for now, we had come across a much needed water station. I don't really need one. I do. Can you see it? It uh, seems to catch it and then run it immediately out. Which then seems to run it out under the ground or something. <laughs> I wonder you could just whack this up like a dog. <laughs> Near the water spout was a banner. It says Mujiko no something something. And Mujiko means no accidents. So maybe it's commemorating no accidents on the mountain for a certain oh. amount of time or something. Oh no, there's more to it. <laughs> this says for a bright new Shogatsu? For a bright new year, I think. No accidents. In the end of the year, maybe? Oh. I'm guessing. I don't know. As it turns out, well, the banner was a poem. A, something to the effect of, a year's end accident-free fills a new year with glee. I just realized that this is unfiltered water, and the expectation is that you can take it and drink it. Which means that the water is both clean enough here and it's not filled with parasites that you can actually just drink it straight from the stream. I haven't tasted this yet either. Well, what are we doing? What are we doing? We gotta taste this. <laughs> On second thought, there was some tap water in this, so it's not a good taste test, but it did taste good. <laughs> With our water filled up, it was time for another food break. The sandwich is very smushed. <laughs> it's like one giant sandwich. <laughs> this is three sandwiches smushed into one. <laughs> Michael made rice balls out of fried rice. So delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. 
sandwiches you get at this convenience store here are amazing too. They're just so fresh. Mm. What did you add to the rice to make it stick together? Or do you just... It sticks just, together on its own. Yeah, it's just, that's huh? Japanese rice. It was tempting to keep sitting and resting, but we had to persevere. It's a little steep, and this is a huge drop off. The trail kept switching from deciduous trees to evergreens, but it was consistent in its difficulty. This or uh, Yosemite Falls, which was harder? I don't know. I like still remember Yosemite being worse, but I think this is definitely taking more. I don't know either, because I only have good memories of Yosemite now. <clears throat> I have no memories of how incredibly difficult it was. Was it in the summer? Yeah. I guess that automatically makes this harder. We emerged from the shade and came to a sunny trail marker. This, this is the junction point. It's only 50 minutes? Or? So yeah, from here to this spot here on the map is 50 minutes. Jeez. So, hour pace, two hours. Right now it's <coughs> 3.07, so two hours would put us there just as it's getting dark. So if we could just be a, peppy, a little peppier, <laughs> might be a good idea. It's a bit peppier. But alas, the sunset view is too beautiful to pass up. It was strange, experiencing the sunset in a land that felt so different and unfamiliar. It's easy to focus only on the differences that people have. But when the sun nears the horizon, it unearths the universal aspects of our humanity. We were all exhausted, and there was still quite a bit left to go. To put this into context, Mount Everest is almost 9,000 meters high, and we're going up 2,000 eventually. Today, we're trying to get to 17. We've reached 1,500 meters. 1,300? Oh. It's one of those magnolia seed pods from those big leaves trees we saw earlier. So gnarly looking at it is really cool. So this tree over here has this like camouflage pattern looking bark. Very reminiscent of American sycamore in the US. It's called a ryobu tree, right? It's really got dense wood. The leaves are edible when they're younger. And a lot of people use the wood for charcoal apparently. It's really pretty. This tree is also called Clethra barbanervus. The sun continued setting, and we soon came to another trail marker. And just past that was a beautiful view of the distant hills. You know how people say things like, this makes it worthwhile. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is the toughest trail we have ever done. Smokies is close. Upper Falls Trail, close, but it's not a 2,000 meter mountain. How do all Japanese men hike this? I don't get it. We again rested to eat some food. This is an onigiri surprise, according to Michael. <laughs> oh, I see. Surprise! I see each one has something different in it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we don't it's possible know. we have the same ones, but I don't. They weren't like labeled or anything. Hmm. So. You have some kind of mayo and something. I got mayo and corn. corn? Now what'd you get? Mm -hmm. Oh, the tuna. Tuna. Right. Tuna. <laughs> tuna. Tuna. No. The brothers both got tuna. The brothers tuna. <laughs> <laughs> this is just raw energy, man. It's like... <laughs> the 
There is a blue tent set up ahead next to a trail junction. Not sure if that's the campsite or what? What's going on? Maybe they gave up. <laughs> what I thought were tents turned out to be ladders covered by a tarp. Oh, it's a bunch of ladders. We had reached another trail junction and we felt hopeful about our prospects. I can smell the campsite and it smells like freedom. Everybody alive? Yep, more or less. <laughs> Just picture those cup noodles burning your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure as soon as we turn this corner, we're gonna see the campsite. Yep, come on. Come on, okay, never mind. <laughs> I mean, it's just up here. It's up here. Don't worry, guys. Just keep walking. It'll all be worth it once we get up there. Who am I kidding? <laughs> okay, we can see a light up there. Just follow the light, Robbie. Okay, I'm following the light. I'm following the light. Hopefully, this is not my death. We're gonna be eating ramen, curry, rice balls, dorayaki, peanut butter sandwiches, peanut butter jelly sandwiches, trail mix. Water. I think that's all we brought. <laughs> Look, the first switchback we've seen. Everything else has just been straight uphill. Come about that. Just a little bit further, and we'd be at the tent site. Is that it? Yes, it is. And as you'll soon find out, tenting sites are a bit different here than what we're used to. We did it. It's us. If you stay with a tent, one person, 500 yen. For the lodge, it's 4,000. That's like $5 and $40 respectively. ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。ちょっと。はい。
And for the second course, Japanese style instant curry. Is all that cooked? We had some ready to eat appetizers. So we've got sanma, which is a Japanese fish. And if that is to be believed, it's called sori, but I don't know. Oh, sori is what they call it in Canada. <laughs> and I that. think it's been three minutes. It's yeah, time yeah, to eat yeah. these cup noodles. Welcome to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's for you guys. I will let Michael do the honors since he is our tour guide. Mm -hmm. oh, the egg. Oh, the egg. Mm -hmm. And the shrimp. Mm -hmm. uh, So, how come, is this like better than American cup noodle? Because there's so many more things in here. <laughs> oh, so good. Victory. Oh, so good. <laughs> Your victory. <laughs> oh. Spot right there. Oh yeah, still as delicious as I remember. <laughs> it's actually not the first time we've had Asian style canned fish. Maybe not this particular one though. But those are some good flavors right there. That's <laughs> I. We gotta open it first. That is ice cold, but the can feels warm in my hand <laughs> because my hand is so warm. <coughs> hey, check this out. I gotta keep, keep my nose warm. What is she? Oh, we forgot to say one thing. Tempe. <laughs> I think I speak for everyone when I say. This is what I live for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got some restaurant. Restaurant style? Restaurant style. Restaurant style beef curry. Medium spiciness. So you just boil these packets in water directly and then you open it and pour it out. It's <laughs> like trying to not throw it. <clears throat> it's like the most comforting smell in the world. <laughs> I want to be that rice ball right now. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. That's a curry onsen. <laughs> Look at that rice ball. <laughs> oh, man, it's so warm. It's so warm. Oh, God, yes. I need a little bit of this rice from the rice ball. Mm. Oh, fantastic, man. That is classic Japanese curry. Well, I'm uh, letting the feelings return to my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this is. Uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> 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 oh baby so at night my knees always get cold so I wanted to try something I cut these pieces out of like some sort of legging pants similar to this material and hopefully it'll keep my knees a little warmer at night <laughs> that was how well it'll work <laughs> report back in the morning <sighs> we're in the bathroom it's at least 10 degrees warmer and this is gonna keep us alive I think Woo! Alright. Yeah. <sighs> that high altitude, man. <clears throat> it was tempting to stay, even sleep in the sturdy bathroom structure. But we headed back to our tents where we were lulled into a false sense of security about how warm it would be at night. We're gonna be pretty warm tonight, <laughs> which is really good. Okay. Good night. <laughs> 
What do you think of your first ever overnight camping experience? First ever? Last ever? <laughs> <laughs> I think it really just depends on how I feel about this, you know, tonight. If I'm like pretty warm and comfy in here, yeah, then I'll be good. It was a long, frigid night. As we slept, the stars shone above us. And below, the ethereal glow of the city lights illuminated distant clouds. It had been an exhausting first day, but the trip was far from over. Tomorrow, we would summit Mount Kumotori. The moon set, and the brisk dawn air greeted us the next day. In the distance, Mount Fuji stood majestically above all the other mountains. As lenticular clouds swirled above Fuji, the rising sun broke through and flooded everything with light. Oh man, coffee in the morning. So what's the flavor here? Norian salmon? Yeah, like Norian salmon. This is the fried rice one, right? Yeah, mm. I think it's wakame, which is just a kind of seaweed. I don't think this morning could have been more perfect. <laughs> now, it was time for a second hot beverage. Got some royal milk tea here, and a shout out to Dan Mel. That'll warm you up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's very hot. Oh, that's sweet. That milk tea is quite sweet. It's like drinking a Cadbury egg, egg or something. <laughs> milk tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drink this like an Irishman would drink a pint of Guinness. <laughs> a very dainty sip. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta look out at the horizon. <laughs> we basked in the warm sun as we finished our breakfast. The campsite had been perfect, and it was going to take some major mental preparation for us to work up the motivation to pack our things and hike out. The steadily rising temperatures definitely helped us get a move on. Two other hikers had appeared at the tent site, and we greeted them as we packed our stuff. <laughs> but it seemed the sun was feeling fickle today. Clouds rolled in, and the temperatures dropped, and snow started falling.
So last night we could have pushed on if we if it wasn't so dark and stayed here. I think that's kind of more of the ridge. But we're going to the top of the mountain now. We stopped to get some water before continuing on our arduous hike. Before long, the snow had cleared, and the sun was peering through the clouds. The sun is once again out. No matter where you are on the world, I guess, mountain weather is always really finicky. But I'm so glad that the sun is back out, and I think I might strip down a little bit. Oh, beautiful. Some parts of the trail were rough and rocky, while others were covered in leaves. It's so interesting seeing these Japanese maple leaves with like all these lobes on them. In the US, the only time you ever see these things are planted in people's yards decoratively. It's a beautiful tree, but it's just really cool seeing a forest where they grow natively here. Along the trail, we also saw some deer droppings, though we hadn't seen any actual deer yet. And in the distance, we saw the Shirani Sanzen mountain range. And then, we came to another junction. This is back down towards the bus stop that we came from yesterday. This is obviously where we came from, which was our tent space, the lodge, and then this is towards the mountain top. Suddenly got really windy. The temperature kept fluctuating, and we constantly had to be taking off and putting on clothes. I'm sure the temperature difference is at least 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gotta be. Yep. Yeah. If not more. This area right here looks a lot like a much more steep Wayne National Forest. Yeah, it's funny. I, there's certain parts of the trail that feel a lot like the Appalachians. There's other parts that rem reminded me of like hiking through the Tetons. Yeah. And these mountains are actually like kind of in between because Appalachians are just old mountains that have eroded away. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. So this is like between the Rockies and that because it's like, you know, there's still some snow-capped mountains in the distance, but you've got these rolling hills that still have a bit of jaggedness in them. So unique. It really is. We arrived at yet another trail junction where the forest opened up. Wow, so look at this ground over here. It's like, just, the leaves just crunch right in. Wow. <laughs> so this is Bunazaka, which is one of the kind of landmarks on the map. Looks like we're getting on that ridge trail. Yeah, yeah we're going up that um, Yeah, the summit's just in that direction. But first, some nourishing trail mix was in order. We chatted and ate food, enjoying the change in scenery and then continued our climb. Now, we were hiking on an open, grassy ridgetop. The sky was clear, the sun was shining, and we couldn't get enough of the view. Everything combined to create a landscape that felt uniquely Japanese. From the characteristic peak of Mount Fuji to the distant misty blue hills. It felt great to really feel like we were in a different country. 
Experiencing different places and people, whether in the wilderness or in the city, is an incredibly enriching experience. These differences are what make the world such a rich and vibrant place to live. Without other cultures and varied landscapes, our world would be a dreary, monotonous place to live. The discomfort that we confront when experiencing new things helps us grow stronger and more adaptive. And it's other people and cultures that introduce us to new ideas and new paradigms. Even here in the wilderness, you notice subtle differences in the way Japanese people and Americans relate to and respect the mountains. But with the differences also come commonalities in our mutual love of the wilderness. gonna have an emergency be the place to do it. <laughs> Kumotori Heliporto. Kumotori Helipad. I think it just says don't camp here because it's a helipad. <laughs> <laughs> they just Unfortunately I think the summit's up there somewhere. <laughs> we came to an old cabin along the ridge and decided to have a snack. It's a hell of a view. I can say with some confidence that I have never eaten trail mix in front of Mount Fuji before today. <laughs> All the, the ice, it like crunches on your feet. It almost has like a sand dune effect. You just take a step and your foot slides down a little. <laughs> I think this is a, a Japanese larch. I remember it from the day hike because it has all these little buds coming off of the twigs and stuff. The grassy ridge before had been a pleasure to hike, but now the trail became incredibly steep. Yeah, this is almost 90 degrees. Oh, mama. but the phenomenal view is motivation enough to keep going. Now we descended, only to continue on to another mountain peak. Here, the hillsides were carpeted in dwarf bamboo called sasa in Japanese. It was a beautiful sight but most of our attention was on climbing, taking the occasional breather. The good news is that the small summit looks like it's even with the big summit. Yeah. It's so discouraging when you go like up and up and up, and then you're like, oh, I gotta go back down, <laughs> go up again. <laughs> they weren't kidding when they said that was like the direct route. It's just like, <clears throat> you're going straight up, buddy. <laughs> they do not do um, switchbacks unless it's no, absolutely I necessary. Seen a single switch oh, actually Yesterday. that last one had some switchbacks. Switch I think that's only because it's impossible to go straight up. <laughs> <laughs> this was a little bit beyond hiking. This is mountain climbing, straight up, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. Konnichiwa. 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 Without question, the most difficult climb I've ever done in my life. But look at that view. Just a little more. Thankfully, we soon reached the next peak, which Andrew mistakenly thought was the summit. 
That was exhausting, but man, it feels good to get to the top. We're not there yet. <laughs> Top of the mountain. Woohoo! This right here is the top. This is it. This Good is boys. it. In the distance, we could see a hut built atop the peak of the mountain. Ooh, we are so close. The snow in the air right now is absolutely magical. It's like so fluttery and fine. It's beautiful. So you got one more in there? This is it. The final climb. Finally, we had reached the summit, 2,017 meters in the sky. In the distance, Tokyo went about its day, and the blue hills and trees were glazed in ice. But to be honest, the view from the top wasn't particularly impressive. It wasn't summiting the mountain that stuck out to us. After all, there's always a bigger mountain to climb. And getting to the top isn't what we look back on when we remember this trip. Instead, it was the camaraderie that we felt as we sat on a bench, sharing food with each other beneath the golden sun. Day in and day out, we often focus on our own ambitions and our own accomplishments. But you only have to look at the most powerful people in the world to realize that this Sisyphean drive leaves you feeling empty and always looking for more. It's in our nature that we won't be fully satisfied in life if we focus only on ourselves. It's only when we commune and cooperate with others that we find happiness. It had been an incredibly steep descent down from the summit, but now the trail eased up. Still, after all the climbing we had done, our tired legs made the downhill hike that much tougher. I gotta say, my legs don't feel like wet noodles, but they do feel like al dente noodles. <laughs> <laughs> the trail bent around the hillsides, and in the shade, snow covered the path. And in the snow were some deer tracks. We continued on, emerging once again into the light. Evening was closing in on us, and the trail became more and more precarious. Along the trail, Michael found an old sign, possibly belonging to a restaurant. So, it's a piece of steel, but it says menu, like on the menu, and then some kind of sausage. With food on our mind, we filled up on water and kept moving. Dusk had fallen, and we checked our progress before continuing down the steep, rocky trail. Before long, it had become too dark to continue without our headlamps. We had to look for anything on the trail that might trip us up. Lots of tree roots and rocks. We just passed this really precarious area. It looks like we might have a bridge coming up. 
promising. I think it looks promising. Nice open area, at least. From what we could tell, we were about 2,000 feet from our next tent site, though we may have underestimated just how much we had left to hike. Hopefully it's not as precarious as it was before. There was a light or something up ahead. It's like a reflector. What we just agreed upon is actually correct. I said we probably have another 45 minutes. Right now we're at about just under 1,300, so we got 200 more to go. We thought we were much closer, but we still had 200 meters left to descend, and about 45 minutes left to hike, and we were exhausted. We kept searching for signs of the next campground, but all we saw were signs about the municipal water supplied by the mountain. The campsite is just up ahead. It doesn't feel like these are just sled down. <laughs> We're very, very close now. We're about 500 feet away. The trail, though, has not eased up at all. Very precarious. Slippery here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's pretty close. Oh, the warm glow. Oh, it's in spinning distance, man. You guys remember that time we were in the Smokies and it was raining and we saw that light in the distance? The sight of the tenting area reinvigorated us, but there was still a bit to hike. Woo! That's a drop. There's a chain to hold on to. I feel like that's the only part of the trail that didn't need a chain. Wow, this is just no joke. Even in the daytime, this would be no joke. The trail was steep and the night was freezing, but we continued on. Oh, we are close, man. I can feel it. <laughs> oh yeah! Woo! What? Air relief! Oh my goodness! Friend, we're saved! Look at this village! It's like a... <laughs> this is great! Oh man! We have arrived, boys! Oh yeah! We, we survived! Kiss that ground! Gosh! Kiss oh. that ground! <laughs> I do not want to do that again in the dark. Sit on these big wooden benches! We were greeted by the friendly man at the campground, who we had actually met riding the bus to our trailhead. Konbanwa! Arigatou gozaimasu. Finally, we had made it to the Sanjo no Yu tent site. And this was a very special tent site. Because the Yu in Sanjo no Yu means bathhouse. <laughs> Amazingly, these hot springs were originally discovered 200 years ago by a wandering hunter a bit of serendipity that we are incredibly grateful for. And it's customary to bathe nude at an onsen.
As Austin Powers would say, I feel extreme relaxation. <laughs> Hot spring was just like the best way to flush away all that exhaustion. That pathway down in the dark is real scary and real dangerous. Yeah, when I saw those lights, Dude, I was like, we are you? there. I don't even have words. I don't know why I, I told you to film me, but <laughs> it's just the best thing that I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> Expand. My people might come here and hike every week because after seeing this place, it's like a fantastic way to end the trip and you meet interesting people here. It's like a little secret place that you know, only certain people know about. And the other beautiful thing about this place is that you can order delicious curry. That's fine with me. Yeah, it's still, it's still really good. Oh my god. Yeah, man. I did not expect to be eating this tonight. Oh man. This, this <laughs> you, <laughs> are you jealous? You're jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous and I'm about to eat it. <laughs> and before every meal, there's a Japanese custom. We say, eat a dakimas. This is amazing, man. If I were a more emotional person, I would be crying. <laughs> I love the pickle. What is this anyway? What pickled radish or is this? Yeah, it's just like what you're trying to do. Yeah. Some sake. Is it well, warm? It's uh, room temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Say a toast. <laughs> this is what we all live for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright, we've got this deer jerky. And I can't wait to try it. Yeah, it's definitely got a unique gamey flavor to it. First of all, it's seasoned very well. And it really does taste very different from beef jerky. It's delicious. It's been many, many years since I've had deer. I've definitely smoked. <laughs> Is it good though? <laughs> no, no, it's very good. I'm just kind of... <laughs> thinking about it? Mm. Good. Now it's got a great smoked flavor. Mm -hmm. Salty. Great texture. <laughs> Tastes like water. <laughs> now it tastes like sake. Yeah. Ooh. Michael, come on. Oh. Do your do your public duty. <laughs> my public duty of finishing. <laughs> Am I finishing this? I've, I've had too many. It tasted like delicious sweet rice liquid and then it turned to paint thinner. <laughs> Here you go. Sake. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a huge fan myself. <laughs> I've had plenty of it. Warm from the hot springs and full from the curry, we relax inside the warm cabin for just a little longer. The idea of a hot spring in a hut with a fully equipped kitchen might seem odd to hikers who are used to backpacking being a rustic, pristine wilderness experience. But between the aesthetic of the tent site and the reverence for nature that everybody here exuded, this felt less like an intrusion on nature and more like an extension of it. It's incredibly enriching to experience the wilderness through another culture's lens. Seeing how different ideas about our place in nature take shape in other countries opens us up to more possibilities for communing with the earth. Oh. 
After resting, it was time to head to the tent site, which was at the bottom of a series of steep switchbacks. It seemed our hike wasn't quite over yet. That shoe's not even tight. As we made our way down, we saw something moving in the dark. I assume that's okay? Yeah, that's eyes are going. Do you see that? Now that is a donkey or a goat. Michael's gonna go tell him. Maybe that's his goat. Ah, oh, that might be one of those, the ones I was telling you about, the one that's like, uh, indigenous to Japan. Kamoshika. It turned out to be a sero, a goat antelope endemic to Japan. He is no afraid. Not afraid? <laughs> My friends. <laughs> Please, dinner time. Dinner time. Oh, dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Once hunted so much that the Japanese government declared it a special national monument to prevent poaching in 1955, the Cerro has now reached stable population levels. <laughs> <laughs> we survived. <laughs> he did not try to eat us. We continued down the path to the tent site, which was situated near a flowing stream. Hey, I don't go here. Hey, I got it. Tonight was a bit warmer, so we set up our tents and got ready for a comfortable night's sleep. Our final morning in Japan. We started the day with some coffee and some hot food. Can't go to Japan without having some miso soup. And what's a better way to warm up than miso soup? Miso is a soup base made from soybeans, and it's a delicious way to start the day. Tastes like Japan. <laughs> That's a miso soup right there. <laughs> Along with the miso soup, we finished off the instant ramen we had brought. After eating, we stayed in the cabin for a few more moments to warm up. The warmth from the wood stove embraced us as we enjoyed the hospitality of the rustic hut one last time.
Now, it was time to pack up and get ready for our final hike out. We hiked away from the mountains with a renewed sense of humility. It's easy to focus on ourselves when we stand atop skyscrapers and towers, but when you climb a mountain, you remember that beneath the unique individuality of yourself is a fundamental heartbeat that pulses through all of humankind. Suddenly, the things that make other people seem different fade away, and you connect with them on a deeper level. Perhaps the mistakes our species has made in the past were in part due to a vision lacking in this perspective. When the United States government forced Japanese Americans into internment camps, or barred Asian immigrants from entering the country, perhaps it was because we failed to recognize the common humanity in all of us. And when we recognize the things we hold in common, we appreciate those differences that do exist. It's in experiencing those differences that we learn and share ideas. It's the sharing and exchanging of culture and customs that enriches humanity. It's time for us to cast away our individual and national pride. Travel to another country and embrace the experience. There are so many things to learn and so many people to meet. Of course, not everybody has the time or the means to do that. But you can still talk to your neighbors. Our country, the United States, is blessed to have people from all around the world. Don't let fear rule your life. Let's find out what we all share in common, celebrate our differences, and work towards a world without borders. Thank you very much for watching. This episode was made possible through generous donations by viewers just like yourself. They went to patreon.com slash adventure where they donated money and helped us do trips just like this. Special shout out to Sunjan and his two boys, August and Everett. Shout out to John Truitt and his daughter, Megan, who is actually into Japanese music. And shout out to Trails We Hike. Also a big thank you to Hong Long, Greg Cribb, Paul Chandler, Jim Potts, and T. Bryce Ryan, who wants to remind everybody to keep sharing and caring. Thank you once again to all of our patrons. If you'd like to consider donating, you can go to patreon.com slash adventure. And for as low as $2, you can get bonuses like getting early access to the videos, bloopers and commentary, and other cool bonuses just like that. But either way, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and hitting the like button on this video. See you next time. That's enough climbing for one year. This has like one million transfers before we get there. That building right there, I think, is around 30 floors. 30. And according to Robbie's little iPhone app, we were 252 floors up when we were on the top of that mountain. Jeez. That's 
so crazy, dude. This is the Onigiri surprise, according to Michael. <laughs> no idea what's in it. Yeah, I just know it's got um, some sort of mayonnaise. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Man, that was the surprise. 